every generation we have people that pass away way before their time who could have been so influential on the world around them had they only made it another 5, 10, or 30 years. Masaccio is one of those people. Now, most art historians recognize no other painter in history to have contributed so much to the development of a new style in so short a time as Masaccio, who dies at the age of 27. Just imagine that, changing your field by the age of 27. Now, let's be fair, he probably started as an apprentice when he was 10, but still, within 17 years, by your late 30s, can you change the world? That's exactly what Masaccio does. He is considered the artistic descendant of Giotto, whose calm, monumental style he revolutionized with a whole new repertoire of representational devices studied by later Renaissance artists. Masaccio also knew and understood the innovations of his contemporaries. These people are constantly talking and looking at each other's work. They're all completely aware of one another. Nothing is in isolation. But he understood, understood the innovations of his contemporaries, such as Gaberte, Brunelleschi, and Donatello. He also introduces new possibilities for both form and content. And one of the greatest examples of this is going to be tribute money. Now, the murals for the Brancacci Chapel at Santa Maria del Carmine provide an excellent example of his innovations. Here, the artist depicts a seldom seen narrative from the Gospel of Matthew. What's happening is Christ and his followers have come into the town of Capernaum. And Jesus, I need to bring up my pen here, is sending Peter, right here, off to get a fish. Really to a nearby shore of Lake Galilee where he finds tribute in the mouth of a fish. And here's Peter over there getting that money. And then the narrative moves to the other side because Peter provides that money here to the tax collector. It's unknown why the tax collector isn't wearing pants. But the tax collector turns up twice. Here we see him once and here we see him again. Of course, Peter shows up three times here, here, and here. But as a viewer, that's fine. We're just moving around the scene, getting a sense of the story. It's not a story that lends itself to a single image to really depict the entire thing. Now, Masaccio's modeling comes from a specific light source, a technique that we last saw in Giotto's work, creating a natural modeling of the figure. The lighting, for the most part, is coming from the upper right, where you see my little smiley sun, and shining down consistently across the scene. Now, what will set the Renaissance apart from, for example, the Baroque or other later movements is we get this very broad general light as if everything is happening in sort of a midday, mid-morning to mid-afternoon sunlight. By accentuating this single source, Masaccio adds a sculptural depth to his figures, creating almost relief in two dimensions. Unlike Giotto, the light also accentuates the background, and this is the first attempt at atmospheric perspective that we're seeing in this class in painting. When you look at that background, these mountains are falling back just like you would see on the freeway. They're darker and more detailed up front, and they lose contrast, and the tone becomes more subdued as they move into the background, giving us the illusion of space, not just amongst the figures, but also amongst the mountains. What else does he do? Well, he sets up the figures around Christ in a circular form, rather than appearing only behind and beside him, which would have been far more common. Why? Why go to the trouble of encircling Jesus with his own followers? As humans, we want to see what's happening in the middle of a circle. We are automatically drawn to it. Imagine the last time you were at a club or any other social event. If there's a circle of people 
standing around something, you want to join that circle. You want to see what's in the middle. And so Masaccio, knowing that little bit of human psychology, encircles Jesus and draws our eye straight in. Now, here's the thing. That's not the only thing that draws us to Jesus, knowing that he's the central figure of the narrative. This is where we need to talk about perspective. So, I've drawn some lines here, and they are going to be important. First, we have the horizon line. This is a line that you see only outdoors. We kind of mimic it indoors, roughly where it is. And it's where the land ends and the sky begins. It gives us a sense of grounding. It gives us a sense of existing in the terrestrial plane. Then we have orthogonals. Orthogonals are basically receding horizontal lines. So if you look out or down a hallway, for example, those horizontal lines that make up the corners of that hallway will all start to meet. Those lines are called orthogonals. So they are receding horizontal lines and they always point to one thing, which is the vanishing point. And that vanishing point is always going to draw your attention. All of the orthogonals will draw your eye towards it. Now, none of this is happening consciously. You don't sit there and go, huh, the orthogonal is kind of pointing that way and this one's pointing this way and, and so it lines up. Subconsciously, it works though. You're automatically drawn to that one point. And you're sitting there going, well, this is all ridiculous. No artist is really going to take the time to play around with all of these things and oh man he did that yes he did so I've applied it over the painting and look everything lines up almost like I drew it on the painting and then took it off pretty cool moving on in this case that vanishing point falls directly on Jesus's head it draws us immediately to the most important figure in the image because look at Jesus compared to everyone else. He looks fairly similar. They all have halos. They all have togas. They're all in different colors. You could mistake him. But by using both the encirclement that we talked about earlier and placing the vanishing point on Jesus, this is known as manipulating the vanishing point or moving it to the focal area, the area that you want people to pay attention to, this will draw our attention. This is what sets Masaccio apart, using all of these compositional tools together to create a stronger image, something that becomes both more relatable, but also more understandable. 